It's amazing that bird is flying so well without extending its wings. <laughs> and it's very acrobatic. Welcome to Ask an Expert. I'm Paul Sappho. I'm here to answer questions from the Twitterverse, and we'll see how fast you can embarrass me. Well, looky here. First question. How do you imagine the big religions will be impacted by dramatic life extension? Cool question. I think we underestimate the ability of major religions to accommodate themselves to changes. For example, a lot of people speculate that what happens if we should find evidence of intelligent life elsewhere in the universe and what will the religions all respond. Catholic Church has already factored this in and I think the other religions won't have any trouble either. In fact, my forecast is should we find intelligent life elsewhere in the universe, you can break the human response into three categories. One third of humans will want to fight them, one third of humans will want to convert them to their religion, and one third of the humans will want to sell them something. So I think that established religion will do just fine with life extension. In fact, some churches, you know, the ones that have bake sales and rummage sales and the like, will probably welcome it because the average age of parishioners is increasing and the fact that older parishioners might be able to last longer means that many more bake sales. And there are flocks of birds around here today. Yes! Got it. From Marco, how would VR and AR integrate in our daily life in five to ten years? Which industries have the biggest risk to be disrupted? Daily life, a little tricky. Um, I think we may see augmented reality um, hit a little bit sooner um, in places like automobiles begin to make tentative steps of doing things on windshields. <laughs> Virtual reality, the key factor is the nausea factor. The first generation of Oculus was really wonderful, but I don't know about you, but it made me feel sort of vaguely ill in about two minutes. The latest generation doesn't make me feel ill until about eight minutes in. And that's gonna be the key factor to move this out into the mainstream. But it's a very solvable problem. So I think that we'll see it interactive entertainment pretty quickly. Um, in terms of disruption, I actually think it's time to retire the word disrupt. Replace it with transform. Disruption only happens to people who are resisting the move into the future and the innovations that come. And the best way is to not fight it, but go with the flow, or as we do in California, if there's a big wave coming, hop on a surfboard and ride it. Uh, I can hear the sound of a jet engine. No, oh, it's a bird, it's a bird, it's arrived. It's a one-eyed bird, it's got a pirate's eye patch on it. Hmm. Sophie asks, when will Jurassic Park happen in our lifetime? <laughs> well, you know, hopefully based on the movie, everybody's gonna be a lot more cautious when they do this. There are people working very hard to bring back extinct life forms. Uh, the Long Now Foundation, which I'm on the board of, we're working very hard to bring back the passenger pigeon, which while not as exciting as a T-Rex, would be an absolutely breathtaking sight to see the sky dark with clouds of passenger pigeons migrating north and south. And then of course there's some folks in Russia who are trying to bring back woolly mammoths I think that's also lots of fun. And once they bring back woolly mammoths, I'm hoping we'll also use uh, genetics to re-engineer woolly mammoths. Because I don't know about you, but I think a woolly mammoth the size of my cat would be an absolutely awesome pet. And you know, the refrigerated room that I'd need to have it sleep in wouldn't be so big that it would cause me a big electric budget. Thanks again for watching Ask an Expert. I'm Paul Sappho. And don't forget to subscribe and be sure to tune in next week for the next episode. Right. Dudes. Dude. Dude. Okay.